Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So I figured out which attack I want to code next. It's this one here from the boss fight against Sans in the original Undertale game. This is what it looks like. There are these two kind of wall-like bones that you have to dodge between. I quite like how this looks, and I think it should also be fairly easy to code. You can see that they're outside of the box, which is kind of unusual for a Undertale attack. So we're going to build in some code that allows us to switch between having attacks that are only inside the box and attacks that are also outside of the box as well. So here we are in our Scratch game. Let's first add in the costume that we need for our new attack. So make sure that you've selected the projectile sprite, then go into the top left corner and select costumes. We're going to go to the bottom left corner and we're going to hover up until we get to this setting, paint. And we're going to draw in a white rectangle. With no outline. And we're going to make this really long. Now, rather than making this perfect, I'm just going to put in the uh, initial sort of rectangle. We'll see how it looks. And once we're happy with the way that it's performing, then we can come in and add the little details to make it look more like the bones that uh, Sans and Papyrus use in their Undertale fights. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new my block to contain this new attack. So go across to the left side of the screen and click on my blocks. And then in the top left, click on make a block. Now we're going to call this, uh, for now, let's just call it long. We're going to press OK. I'm going to get our define long. I'm just going to move it off by itself somewhere. Um, first, we're going to go to looks, the purple category, and look for go to front layer. It's near the bottom. Drag that out, because remember, that was one of the key defining features of this attack, that we could see um, the attack outside of the box. Um, so now because we are going to be switching between these attacks, we need to make sure that when we're doing our scatter attack, we are behind the box. So pull out another go to front layer and put it underneath define scatter, but this time change it to back. All right, that seems pretty good. Um, the other thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to switch costumes. So get out switch costume and put that underneath define long. Now, one thing that we haven't done, if you click on this, you can see that we've got a costume called bone and a costume called costume one. This is why it's really important to name all of your costumes and your sprites so that you know what they are and what they do. Let's fix that now before we forget. Let's go back up to costumes and let's rename this costume one. Let's just call it long for now. All right, let's go back to the code and Let's, and we've got our switch costume to long. That's good. Now we need to make sure that when we're doing our scatter attack, we're using just the normal sized bone. So let's get out another switch costume, put it underneath scatter, but change this to bone. So let's start putting in some code that creates our projectiles on our screen and points them in a direction. Let's go to control and get out a repeat 10 put that on at the bottom of our define long code. Then let's go to motion and get out go to x, y. Now the y variable, remember, controls how far up or down the sprite is on the screen. The very top of the screen is 180. But if we spawn these projectiles in the very top of the screen, they'll touch the edge and immediately delete themselves. Because remember, our projectiles will always keep moving until they reach the edge of the screen, any edge of the screen, and then they delete themselves. So let's try not quite the top of the screen, but a little bit lower than that. Let's try 160. Um, for our x variable, 
we want it to be on the left side of the screen so it's going to be on it's going to be a minus number let's try minus 100 if you already understand the coordinates for scratch pretty well feel free to change these numbers so now we need to make sure that we're pointing our projectile in the right direction so let's pull out point in direction 90 put that right here click on where it says 90 and pull the arrow so it's pointing down that's going to be creating the projectiles up here that are going to travel down the screen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a clone. So we're going to go to control. We're going to get out create clone of myself. Put that here. And then we're going to do the other side, the sort of bottom right sort of side of the screen. So we're going to copy this we're going to right click on where it says go to x and then we're going to normal click on where it says duplicate drop this just here we need to make sure that uh, this here is x equals 100 y equals minus 160 and the direction is pointing up because this section of the code is going to make the projectiles here and point them up the screen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom out and look for our forever loop that has that's underneath when green flag clicked. Currently it should have a bunch of scatter codes in it. Pull those out for now. Go to my blocks. Pull out uh, a long block and then let's hit go okay so few things these projectiles aren't as big as we need them to be and also they're happening a bit too um, often we need there to be a pause in between in between a wait so let's hit stop let's go to control get out a wait one seconds and put it right here. Now we already have that variable that we made to control how often we are creating our projectiles. So let's use that now. Let's go to variables. Let's get out projectile spawn rate. And let's drop it over the one in our wait one seconds. Okay, so that should be good. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to make the costume a little bit larger. So let's go to top left corner, click on costumes. I'm going to zoom out. Whoops. I'm going to grab this and stretch it a little bit. Hey, that's pretty much perfect didn't expect to get it right the first time. So that's good. Um, especially once we add on the little circles on the end um, to make it look like a proper bone. That's looking pretty good. All right, so let's do that now. Let's add in some little circles. Now, of course, you can actually have something else. Maybe uh, for you, these could be swords. Uh, they could be something themed around whatever your scratch enemy that you're facing is. Um, they could be, they could be little wavy lines or anything. So let's give it a test because after all, if it's too easy or too hard, then it's not going to be a lot of fun. And this, I think, is going to be too hard. It would be really tricky to avoid all of these attacks. So let's make these gaps between the projectiles a little bit larger. Um, look for define long, and we're going to change our projectile spawn rate variable. So go to variables, 
get out set variable, put it underneath define long, and then we're going to select the projectile spawn rate. Now, if we make this a larger number, there will be a larger gap between each time the game makes those projectiles. So we normally have this at 0 0.4, but let's make it 0 0.7. Let's give that a try. Okay, this seems a lot more doable. Yeah, I like this. Now we could change the speed, but if we do that and sort of flip between our long attack and our scatter attack pretty quickly, then you're going to notice these projectiles speeding up and slowing down at kind of odd times. So if you do end up changing the speed in your attacks, make sure that you have like a pretty long wait in between different types of attacks that might have different speeds. Um, so if we've changed the, spawn, the set projectile spawn rate um, here in our long attack, we should also change it in our scatter attack to make sure it's appropriate for the scatter attack. Um, so let's get out a set projectile spawn rate to 0 0.4 right underneath us define scatter. Okay, that all looks pretty good. Um, there's just one more thing we're going to do is we're going to add in an input to our define long. So uh, right click on it and normal click on edit. And we're going to put a space and then a repeat. And then we're going to add an input right here. And we're gonna call this just R, R is for repeat. And then we're going to press OK. And now we just need to get this R and drag it over where we have repeat. Now, the way that I've shown you how to make these inputs is so that when you're looking at an attack, you'll know what the inputs are. But bearing in mind that this word direction and this word repeat, all they are are descriptions of what the input is. So if you can have a good understanding of how these inputs work and you want these to be a bit shorter, you don't actually have to include the direction, repeat, that kind of thing. You could use just letters if you wanted as well, just D and R, something like that as a reminder for what each of these inputs does. And also, don't forget, you can also add in your own inputs. Make your inputs do things like uh, change um, maybe the projectile speed or the projectile spawn rate. Have a bit of an experiment, get creative with it. So now that we have this working, we need to make sure that we've got our, uh, inside our forever loop, we need to make sure we put a number inside our long attack. Let's say repeat 10. So now that we've got this working, we can actually start building in attacks that change. Um, so let's, in our forever loop, get out scatter, and let's say left, repeat five, and let's get out another scatter, right, repeat five, and let's see what this looks like. So this is quite cool. This is the beginnings of having our attack variety. Have a bit of an experiment. Uh, see what happens if you do like repeat one on all of these. See what that kind of looks like. You can kind of create combinations of different types of attacks. And also don't be afraid to put uh, weights in between some of these attacks. You might have maybe a wait 0 0.5 seconds after the long attack is played before the scatter attack starts, something like that. So that's all uh, for our second attack. Um, 
uh, this week. I hope that's been fun. I hope you've had an opportunity to be creative and kind of put your own stamp on this. Um, until next week, you can always subscribe, ring the bell to see the next episode and know when we're doing live streams and that kind of thing in the future. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.